Hi, I'm Becky Mayer and welcome to Transitions, Body, Mind, Spirit. Transitions, we all go through them. And I like to use the example of something that I do, a metaphor for our life at a triathlon. You start when you swim, then you get all, get out in out of the water and take your goggles off and then get on the bicycle and get out of that transition area. And you, after you bike, then you put on your running shoes and run. And what a great metaphor for all the different things we, we do in our lives to transition from one thing to another to another. And we have a great guest today. In fact, this is show number two. So make sure you see show number one. And it's Dr. Reverend Mitch Johnson, who is a science of mind minister and a songwriter and well, many, many things in Nashville. Yes. So welcome. I'm so glad Thank you're you. here. Thank you for having me. Yes. And I wanted to give a little indication of what you do now as uh, and tell us a little bit about the center that you have. Yeah. Well, uh, the center is a, it's a congregation of people. <laughs> it's a, not a traditional church. And it's called? Uh, center for Spiritual Living Nashville. Center right. for Spiritual Living Nashville. And uh, we teach the philosophy of the science of mind. Now the science of mind, I should say this because we changed our name from religious science to the Center for Spiritual Living because everyone asked us, they said, well, are you Scientology? No, we're not Scientology. Are you Christian Science? No, we're not Christian Science. We're the Centers for Spiritual Living. We teach the science of mind. The science of mind uh, was written by a man named Ernest Holmes, Dr. Ernest Holmes. And what he did was he took the best of science of his day, now this, this is back in the 20s and 30s and mm -hmm. 40s, he took the best of science of his day, the best of religion, and the best of philosophy, and he combined it to see, well, what, what works in life? Mm -hmm. what, can, what can I take from this, all of these things, and make practical use of it in my life? Mm -hmm. and so he started teaching something that we call prayer treatment. Now treatment is just basically this. Uh, if you follow the teachings of Jesus, where Jesus said, when you pray, believe you have received. Mm -hmm. Believe. Words, believe you have received as if it's already done. And that's how I perform miracles, yeah, right? <laughs> right. So, uh, so, this, so Dr. Holmes took that idea and he said, okay, uh, if, if Jesus did it, and it's part of the whole New Thought movement, the New Thought was called New Thought Christianity. It was taking a look at Christianity and saying, now, what things did Jesus teach that really made sense? Mm -hmm. And so, if, in fact, if you read in the book of John, it says, all, Jesus says, all these things that I do, you can do, and even greater. Mm -hmm. Even greater. So, <laughs> so it's within the potential and possibility of every human being to create so-called miracles. But... Uh, what we would necessarily call them miracles as though there's something supernatural. The supernatural is in our believing, in our faith that something is really so. Mm -hmm. So uh, so we taught this business called prayer treatment. Mm -hmm. And what it was was a series of words and ideas and feelings and pictures all combined in your mind to convince you that the prayer you were saying was really so. Mm -hmm. So you're part of something so incredible and so large. You want to call it the universe, and now the scientists are saying the universe is within universes. I mean, we're talking big, right? Mm -hmm. so infinite. 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 And eternal. Yes. And so this thing, this creative field of energy has created you, which also means something really startling. It means you can use it to create something in your life. This is what Dr. Holmes used to say. Mm -hmm. There's a power for good in the universe greater than I am, and we can use it. And you can tap into it. <laughs> it's yeah. So it's, uh, it's not that I want the job of God. You know, I don't. It's too big for me. But I, do, I am God 
in terms of how what I'm creating in my experience of life. Mm -hmm. So what the universe is on the macrocosm, I am on the microcosm, and so are you. So is everyone, really. Mm -hmm. So what we're teaching is that uh, as you use this prayer of faith, you know, as it says in the Bible, a prayer of faith can achieve great things, you know, uh, so it does. Mm -hmm. And a prayer of faith, a faith believing, of, of having a sense that, yes, this is really true. And so you have to do it enough times. You have to practice enough. Mm -hmm. You have to think about the thoughts like enough that it becomes so real to you in your heart of mind. Then this quantum field of energy has no choice because there's a law involved, a sign we call it the science law, and that law of mind will only create then in your experience something like you want, and you could even say, or something even better. Mm -hmm. Now, the tricky part is it will also create all the bad stuff you think. <laughs> <laughs> so give some examples, like if you have a gloom and doom, and uh, you yeah. know, oh, they're are really out to get me, they're really gonna, yeah. you and know. And they will. <laughs> and then they will, because that's what you were thinking yeah. about. Well, it's, it's not that, you're, that every thought you have is going to bring disaster to you if it's a disastrous thought. Mm -hmm. But it's more like if you're the kind of person that builds, you know, it's like every bird flies through, but if you build a nest for them, they're going to stay. <laughs> and it's those nests that stay that becomes habitual thinking. Mm -hmm. I mean, perhaps you know people who are, who are constantly down and everything in their life shows that they are down. In mm -hmm. other words, you have an idea, and you have that idea, and you repeat and repeat and repeat that idea, and then you repeat it enough, and then when it comes up in your life, then it confirms what you thought. Life sucks, you know? Mm -hmm. And so you think life sucks, and then life tends to confirm it. But mm -hmm. if you can start, if you can start a program, a regime of thinking along a different line, of perhaps having someone help you, of someone praying for you, someone in a class, you know, believing in you. Just someone believing you makes all the difference in the world, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And it is that, that, that two of you together, it isn't like there's more God, but there's more people believing in God, or in God as an energy, as a divine source, as a creative field of quantum potential. I don't care what you call it. You mm -hmm. can call it the Atman or the Buddha nature or the Christ consciousness, or I don't care. Mm -hmm. But what I do care is that you learn to understand that you're a part of something so incredible, so large, mm -hmm. it can do anything. Mm -hmm. It can do literally anything. Uh, Someone always asks me in class, they say, well, what is God? Anyhow, and I, I don't know, you know. <laughs> See, if I, and people always say, well, you mean you think you've got the answer to everything? I said, no, mm -hmm. no, I don't know. I don't think there is a final answer. I think we're like, uh, an, an example I always use is that we're like frogs who are sitting on the edge of a road in the rain, <laughs> and a Mercedes goes by, <laughs> you know. Does a frog know what that Mercedes is? Maybe it thinks, oh, that Mercedes is an animal or something. I better be careful. It might eat me. But it has no concept that there's a person driving the Mercedes, mm -hmm. no concept of all the computers and the technology that's made that Mercedes a vehicle, no one in technology of why it even goes. So that's how we are in comparison to the infinitude of the universe. So we are here on this plane to learn. We're here to grow. You know, I, I'd, I'd like to point out, too, that if you think of the Milky Way galaxy, one of a billion galaxies in this universe, right. the Milky Way galaxy, it take, if you could go at the speed of light, it takes 100,000 years to go from one end of it to the other. That's huge. And that's only yeah. one of a billion <laughs> other galaxies. Right. And we are over here in some obscure part of it. Mm -hmm. I'm not... I'm not uh, saying, I'm not, you know, denying us, but we're part of all of this. Mm -hmm. And we have to start believing that and taking hold of it and living our lives as if that's really so. Mm -hmm. And when we start doing that, wonderful changes can happen. Mm -hmm. And I've seen it. I've seen it in a lot of people. We were talking mm -hmm. earlier about, uh, I won't say her name, she didn't give me permission, <laughs> but uh, she came here 
and was a glass worker and was a glass artist. Oh, an artist that yeah. did glass. Yeah, I did, uh -huh. did glass things, beautiful things, you know, and I think she still does them. But she wanted a different career and she wanted to make some money. She went into real estate, your, <laughs> yes. your profession, and has done really well. And she says, these classes changed my life. Well, what changed your li her life mm -hmm. was her ability to see things differently than she saw them before. Mm -hmm. And it's that simple. If, I, if nothing else, I want everyone in the world to see that the life is a wonderful possibility that's always ready to happen in a different way. I know lots of bad things are going on in the world. You know what they always have. Mm -hmm. you know, even Jesus said, you know, you're always going to have wars and rumors of wars, you know. All, but so many good things are going on in this world, too. Yeah, we don't seem to get enough information about the good things well, just in think the news. How different life is from 10 years ago. Think of the technology, the uh, iPhones and, the iPhones. and uh, all the tech and computers and everything that's happened. Well, the cars are so much better than they used to be. And uh, all of that is ha constantly happening. Human life is improving. I was reading a statistic recently. There are more people better off now hmm. in this world than there ever were. Wow, that's more a great thing. More people better off than there ever were. Now, I know there's lots and lots of people that need help, and certainly we ought to help them. Mm -hmm. uh, but this philosophy can help them. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I want to do is teach people that, what's the old saying, you know, teach a man to to, to, to feed your man to fish. Give him a fish, but teach him to teach him to fish. If you give him a fish, he'll eat for a day. But if you teach him how to fish, he'll eat forever, right? Right. And I, of course, my philosophy is if you teach a man to, to fish, he'll go lay in a boat and drink beer all day. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I was only kidding with that. Right. But uh, if you would can teach that man to fish, and what we're, what we're talking about now, if you can teach that person to believe in themselves, Mm -hmm. to believe that life is for them. And I know a lot of people have a lot of things that have happened to them in this life that tell them that's not true. Mm -hmm. But if you can possibly turn it around mm -hmm. and perhaps coming to a center like ours and making friends there and perhaps getting into classes and perhaps learning to shift your consciousness from what seems to be mm -hmm. to what can be. Mm -hmm. And that's the biggest thing that we all have to deal with. What we seems to be. We have to get past what seems to be the appearances. Mm -hmm. We have to get past that, you know, things may look bad now. Mm -hmm. We have to get past that, oh, you know, the real estate market's down. Oh, you know, there's too many real estate people in this city. Oh, oh you know, there's so many songwriters. Oh, there's so many can songwriters. How can you ever do anything? Yeah. Yet, uh, you have to get past that. You have to have a faith and a belief that, mm -hmm. yes, there's something in me that wants to do this. Mm -hmm. There's something in me that is greater than I am. Mm -hmm. You know, call it God. Mm -hmm. There's something in me that's the higher self, if you want to say it, or the my higher self, my God self, mm -hmm. that part of me that wants to express life in a grand and magnificent way. And mm -hmm. I can do it. And right. everyone can. Now, I know in the first show we really went uh, in detail about your your personal history but let's do the, the short version of you started out as a child as a gospel singer and you're five years old and you're up there and, <laughs> and, uh, and this was a totally different philosophy. It was a philosophy of, uh, I guess, a conservative Christian. Yeah. And tell us a little bit about how... Well, the thing, about, the thing I noticed about that, though, mm -hmm. is there was a consistency in me. The consistency was a spiritual nature. When I sang, I felt spiritual. You felt I spiritual felt with God? I felt, you know, like singing and music in general, I think, is so close to so close to spiritual things. If I had a vibration, I'd say it's up here somewhere at the love level. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's, it's a, so I had that, and I had that for a long time. That's why I wanted to get out of the sales business into the music business. I think I missed that. I wanted that. In fact, mm. I still do. I'm starting to take ukulele lessons now to get back my... Aha, <laughs> uh -huh. but, but basically, as a child, you had a spirit within you that was creative and yeah. music. Yeah, And an then you went into science as science a degree in college, yeah. and which has nothing to do with music. 
No. And then, and then, a and different then, kind of creativity, perhaps. Right. Yeah. And then you decided music came back in your life. Yeah. Right. Right. And it did. And and spirituality came back. In I a different form, though. Right. It wasn't but you it was being still in the Baptist church. No, but it was still, oh, God and love and my heart. God, love, and your heart. Instead of my head. So much of people have said to me, you know, well, the science of mind is very intellectual. Well, yes, I suppose you could say that. But uh, it's also heart. It's like I tell people that they've got to take that 12-inch journey from their head to their heart. <laughs> ha! You've got to, yeah, you can intellectualize and you can write out a prayer, but it has to be felt here in your heart. You have to feel that this is really happening, and then it will. Mm -hmm. hmm. And then you also talked about at one point you were at a low point, yeah. and uh, you started to learn more about this philosophy, and it did start to change your life. Yes. And that brought you, uh, maybe a relationship had to end, and then you brought you a new wonderful woman in your life that uh, she just, I guess, sadly passed away last year, but you had many, many years together. Yeah. And you brought that in your life, and then the movement from you were in the South went to California, and then brought this philosophy back to in. Nashville. Yeah. They're back in the South. Back in the South. Yes. Y'all. Yeah, <laughs> y'all. <laughs> and then you also somehow must have envisioned that this philosophy is really uh, amazing, and more people need to know about it. Who's yeah. going to do it? Yeah. And uh, so <clears throat> a group of people said, well, why don't you do it? You know, we like to listen to you more than we like the other ministers. I kept bringing other ministers in. <laughs> and, and so you decided so you'd I, start so I, a church. I started it, and I started, I said, well, I'll hold Sunday meetings, you know. But after a couple of meetings, I went, oh, I'm supposed to do this. You felt the calling to yeah, be the minister of is, the church that I'm you were trying to get. I'm supposed to be doing this, you know, and uh, it was so clear to me. That's all I can say to you. And when mm -hmm. something is that clear to you, mm -hmm. doors open, things fall, serendipity happens, uh, and they uh, all happen for me. And tell us about the law of attraction. You know, uh -huh. and also tell us, a lot of people out there have seen the movie called The Secret. Yeah. All right, and that opened them up to, oh, th th what is this? Yeah. Uh, it's been very helpful to a lot of people to get them yeah. to the philosophy. What is your feeling about that? Well, I think the secret did uh, did bring in. Uh, I can remember when I, it brought in a lot of people to our center mm -hmm. <laughs> at that time. Um, a lot of people get turned off by the secret because they felt like it was too simple. But the truth is, this stuff is simple. Mm. It's not always easy, <laughs> but mm -hmm. it is simple. You know, the simple part is you want to create something. Well, let's see. First, you have to know what you want to create. You have to be definite. You have to mm -hmm. say, okay, I want, uh, you know, and you, you don't have to say, well, for example, uh, I use Jack Canfield. He talked about uh, how he wanted to create uh, $100,000 a year, and he was, had been a teacher, and he wasn't making that kind of money at all. And this is the guy that wrote uh, Chicken Soup for the Soul, yeah, right? Yeah, the Chicken uh -huh. Soup for the Soul series, okay. and he has a book called The Success Principles, which is excellent. Which I have taken that class, <laughs> and it's a good one. And he, uh, he said, I first... So I got this idea. I put a, a sign up on my, on my, on the ceiling in my bedroom. It said one hundred thousand dollars, <laughs> and he kept looking at that sign. And he kept thinking, what would it be like to make a hundred thousand dollars a year? Mm. Now remember, he isn't. And he had a mentor and a friend who kept telling him, well, here's what you have to do. You have to keep thinking about it, and you, when you get an intuition, you go do it. Mm -hmm. You know, when you says you feel guidance to go do this, you go do it. Well. At the end of that first year, he made 98000 He didn't hit the 100000 <laughs> But after that, he made more. And that led him to bigger and bigger things, including getting with Mark Victor Hansen and creating the Chicken Soup for the Soul series, which has made him a multi-billionaire, I think. Right. <laughs> you know, but, uh, he's, uh, but he says that uh, it's that initial willingness to stick to that. You know, it's one thing. I'm not saying there's magic in putting a hundred thousand dollar symbol on your ceiling the magic is in you looking at it enough until it becomes so clear to you 
that it's yours, mm -hmm. you will find a way to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, we like to say in this philosophy, I don't know how some good is going to happen. I don't have to. I just have to know it's going to happen and be right. guided to what I'm supposed to do to help make it happen. Right. You know, or another way of saying that is when say, I know what, God knows how. <laughs> You know. Right, <laughs> you know. right. And so that is what happens. So a lot of times people simply don't want to take the time to do that. They don't want to take the, they procrastinate, they put off what they can do. This, you know, one of the things w you're doing in your class, I'm having you do 50 affirmations in the morning and 50 affirmations at night. Why, because I'm cruel? No, because <laughs> I want you to get it deep in your mind what those affirmations are saying. You're creating them. You're creating then an affirmation. An affirmation is a series of words like, oh, one of my favorite affirmations, and I'll mm -hmm. give this now, and this might be start to you, but I love myself, I believe in myself, and I deserve the very best that life has to offer. Now, and believe it. <laughs> uh, well, understand something. A lot of people say, well, that's so selfish. No, it isn't. It is not selfish at all. I believe everyone deserves the very best. I believe everyone should love themselves. Mm -hmm. I believe everyone is capable and competent when they believe they are. Mm -hmm. You know, I if you're a Christian, Jesus said, I am come that you might have life and you might have it abundantly. Mm -hmm. Not, I'm come that you might suffer and struggle and just get by. You know, that's mm -hmm. not what he said. Mm -hmm. He said, I'm come that, and, he, and so his way of doing things which I hope we're emulating, is, the, is that mm. uh, you can create your experience of life by being willing to do the things, writing the affirmations, going out and seeking the jobs. You know, people mm -hmm. say, well, I'm stuck in this job and I don't know what to do. And I'm going, well, how about, th first off, instead of being stuck in a job, start doing the best you can be right there at that job. If your job is cleaning toilets, become the best toilet mm. cleaner in the world because that attitude of I'm always do my best mm -hmm. is going to lead you into a different kind of job. Either you're going to be lifted up or you're going to be in charge of all the toilet cleanings in the world. <laughs> <laughs> you know. But the, the point is this. Uh -huh. You have to change your thought process about what is happening. Right. And that includes all areas of your life, your creativity, you know, do you have some kind of self-expression that's unique to you, you like to do? You know, like I was uh, meeting and talking to a guy who likes to make, you know, what are these things, flies for fishermen? Oh, yeah, fly fishing. Fly fishing, and yes. he, he makes those. And he just, you know, he loves to spend the time and create all these things. Yes. Well, it wouldn't be my thing, but it's his thing. And mm -hmm. isn't that wonderful? And I think he makes a little bit of money from it, too, mm -hmm. you know, and he enjoys it. and. And he has a creative self-expression. And then there's love in our life. Do we have a relationship with someone special? Do we have love from other people? Do we love all people? Mm -hmm. You know, I lo you have to love yourself first before anybody else is going to love you. Mm -hmm. In fact, the biggest problem, I'm going to be talking about that s on Sunday, actually. The biggest problem in people with finances and relationships is they don't think they're worthy. They don't think they're worthy. Yeah, there's something wrong with me. I'm They're just not good enough, oh. you know. And, uh, I, don't I don't deserve know. to make a lot of money. Nay, or I don't deserve to have love in my life. Mm. You know, and it's, you, sometimes it's just purely unconscious because they picked it up somewhere along the way. As in childhood or? Yeah, whatever, or terrible things that happen to you. Right. But I'm saying that you can turn that around once you become aware that that's what you believe. And you know mm -hmm. what you want? If you want to see what you believe, just look at your life. <laughs> right. And that's what you believe, you know. And if you and if you're not happy with it, you can change it. You can change it, and so. you can take uh, be in a supportive atmosphere uh, and come to your center yeah. and take classes, or if nothing else, go one time to the center. Uh, what uh, Sundays? Sunday, 11 a.m. 11 a.m. And not only hear the great philosophy, but hear some kick-ass music. <laughs> yes.
Good some music. beautiful music, some high-powered musicians yeah. uh, that stirs your soul, gets you going and everything too. We're going to add some more meditative time too. Meditative yeah. time wow. too. Yeah, and uh, it's going to be, so it's like a place to develop your sense of spirituality and the warmness in your heart for well, love. Mm -hmm. so. Wow. So tell people exactly where do they go to learn this philosophy mm -hmm. Tell everyone where where is it, where are you located? Well, we're located at the corner of Charlotte and Brook Hollow, Charlotte Pike, 6705 Charlotte Pike. It's across from the Nashville West Shopping Center. Uh, if you are interested, you can go online to cslnashville.org, cslnashville.org. You can see our website. We're also on Facebook, Center for Spiritual Living Nashville. Mm -hmm. It's on Facebook, so you can look us up there. And you have a newsletter too, right? Yeah, we have a newsletter that's printed, and you can get that if you come to the center. Or uh, I get an email too, yeah, an email you get, newsletter. If you sign up, you can, we'll send you that email, you have the newsletter. It's also, uh, if you want to call us, 615-356-0174. Uh, Okay, and we'll put that on the credits too. Okay, great. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, I I love this philosophy. I love this teaching. It certainly changed my life for the better, and I've seen it change so many people for the better. Now, uh, having said that, I know there's a lot of people that it hasn't changed. It, mm -hmm. it isn't because of the philosophy doesn't work. Right. It's because you have to work at it. Right. You, you have to really be diligent about if you, especially if you've come from a background of not really caring much for yourself. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. start today. Just start today doing something simple like, you know, God made me, so I must be lovable. God made me, I am lovable. I am lovable, absolutely. God made me, I am lovable. And God is love, the Bible says, so I'm lovable. I don't have to do anything or prove anything or become any better or anything, I'm already lovable. And, and acceptance right there. And that acceptance tends to take us up to a higher level of awareness. Wow, wow. Well, I think this philosophy, I know on a personal basis, has really helped me my, from my sweetie pie love life to <laughs> uh, my real estate career to uh, my own spiritual self and love of, um, of people and a feeling of community and everybody deserves that so this is just one avenue that people can uh, visit and try out and again say the name of the community. center for spiritual center living center for nashville. spiritual living nashville thank you very much for being with us thank you for having me yes transition body mind spirit thank you